Hi, my name is Lucy. Thank you for joining me for another segment of First Chapter Friday. Today, I'm going to share a book with you by Nick Stone. You might be familiar with some of her books, um, like Dear Martin, and she has a newer one out, Dear Justice. Um, this is a book of hers called Jackpot, and um, it's uh, it's sort of a mystery with a little romance mixed in. I really like this book. This book is about a girl named Rico Donger, and Donger is spelled danger. So you can imagine that her name gets mistaken a lot for Rico Danger, even though she does not live up to the name Rico Danger. Rico has to work when she's not in school. She has to work at a gas station convenience store. Um, she's a very good employee there. She lives with her mother and her younger brother. She doesn't know her father, um, who was also named Rico. But her family is always sort of one crisis away from um, homelessness. They've lived in their car before. Her mother has medical issues. Her brother has medical issues. So they rely heavily on Rico and she's got a lot of responsibility. Their rent is expensive because her mother moved her to an area so that Rico could go to a good school. A good school, but Rico um, doesn't have a lot of friends there because when she's not in school, she's working. Um, and on Christmas Eve, she is working and she sells some a few lottery tickets to some memorable people, one of whom is this elderly lady who comes in and buys two lottery tickets, gives one to Rico. And it turns out that the a lottery ticket wins the, the whole jackpot and it is from it has been sold at the store that Rico works at. So Rico wants to figure out and it's not claimed. It goes unclaimed. Rico wants to figure out who bought this lottery ticket and find this person mostly because she feels like if she could get some kind of reward that jackpot would help her and all her financial woes would become a thing of the past but she can't do this on her own so she enlists the help of zan who is sort of this um rich popular kid at her school who she's never really talked to before and he's very different than she is, but there's definitely a chemistry there. And that's one of the really fun parts of the book to see how they interact with each other. Um, and so that's like the romance part. And the mystery is who bought the ticket and, and how are they going to find out and sort of what lies do they have to tell? What kind of quest do they have to go on together to track down that ticket? And more than that, this is a book about how we base how we judge one another based on things like race and class those are um really important issues and themes in this book and from from both sides um i mean rico assumes some things about rich people um and you know she's not always correct there um and it it just goes to show this book really that you can't assume that you know anything about someone that you don't know based on what your judgments are. But um, it's a fun book to read because the characters are great and they have, as I said before, they just have a really good chemistry, um, sometimes stressful, sometimes cute, sometimes just funny. Um, so it is fun to read. And this is Jackpot by Nick Stone. I will read chapter one. No money, mo problems. Oh, the irony of counting out change for a $50 bill. Well, mo money, mo problems plays in the background. Sir, I'm out of tens and twenties, I say. I'll have to give you fives and singles. Is that okay? It has to be, obviously. The man smiles and nods enthusiastically. Perfectly fine, he says, dusting off the lapels of his expensive looking suit. Matter of fact, keep a couple of those singles and give me a Mighty Millions ticket with the, multiply, might, with the Mighty Plier thing. I'll slide a few of the other dollars into the Salvation Army bucket out front. Despite my desire to snort, I know one shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but based on the Mercedes-Benz key fob lying on the counter, I'd say this guy doesn't need 
$212 million more dollars. I force the corners of my mouth to lift. That's very generous of you, sir. Barf. Nothing like a cheerful giver. The man takes his $43.74 in change, then grabs his mechanically separated meat stick and bottle of neon green Powerade. Thanks so much, he looks at my name tag. Rico? That's me, I chirp. Hmm, interesting name for a cute girl such as yourself. And what interesting eyes you have. Two different browns. Now he's winking. Oh, God. Thank you, sir. And thank you for shopping at the Gas and Go. He tosses a Merry Christmas over the checkout counter before rotating on the heel of his fancy shoe and strutting out like he's just won the lotto. Merry Christmas. Not much real merry about a 10 hour shift on Christmas Eve. It'll almost be Christmas when I walk out of this joint. And then I get to spend 30 minutes walking home since the one public bus in this town stopped running hours ago. Good thing the crime rate in Snorcross, Georgia is relatively low and it's not that cold out. I look at my low key watch, a birthday gift from my baby brother Jax that I never leave home without despite how childish it makes me look. 97 minutes to freedom. It's the most wonderful time of the year comes pouring out of the speakers. And I drop down onto my stool and put my chin in my hand. Truth be told, the influx of holiday cheer really has been a nice reprieve. Seems like every day there's a new political scandal or gun attack or government sanctioned act of inhumanity or threat of nuclear war. But then Thanksgiving hit and it felt like a collective exhale. The bell over the door dings, snapping me back, and the cutest little old lady I've ever seen makes her way toward the counter. She's tiny, definitely under five feet, and maybe 90 pounds soaking wet, with dark brown skin and a little poof of white hair. The Christmas tree on her sweater has real lights, and when I smile this time, it's for real. Welcome to Gas and Go, I say as she steps up to the counter. Why, thank you, dear. Aren't you just lovely? Cheeks are warm. Well, you're looking pretty lovely yourself, madame, I reply. She giggles. I mean it, that's a gorgeous sweater. Oh, you stop that, she says. And anyhow, shouldn't you be at home with your family? Take it from an old bird. You don't want to work your life away now. I smile again. Yes, ma'am. I'll be blowing this popsicle stand in a little over an hour. Good, she nods approvingly. So how can I help you on this cool Christmas Eve? She leans forward over the counter a bit and I'm drawn toward her like a magnet. Well, I was on my way to church and between you and me, she pauses to peek over her shoulder. It hap I happened to look up as we passed one of those billboards that show the Mighty Millions jackpot. You know what I'm talking about. I nod drop my voice to a near whisper so it matches hers. 212 million, right? That's what the billboard said. I wasn't gonna play this time, but then I saw your station loom up on the left and well, it felt like a sign. So I had to stop. Now I'm really smiling. This is the kind of person I would love to see win. How old are you, sweet pea? She asks. I'm 17, ma'am. That's about what I thought. You remind me of my granddaughter. She's in her third year at Florida A&M A &M University. I feel my, si miles, I feel my smile sag. So I look away and pretend to do something behind the counter, really hoping she doesn't ask about my non-existent college plans. I'd rather not deal with another adult customer's judgy raised eyebrow when I explain that instead of college, I'll accept the management position I've been offered here at Gas and Go and continue to help support my family. When I turn back to her, she's rifling around in her purse. Thought I had a photo somewhere, but I guess not. She shuts the bag and smiles at me. What were we talking about? Um, your granddaughter? No, no, with a wave. Before that, I've got a nasty case of CRS lately. CRS? She leans forward and lowers her voice again. Can't remember shit. And now I'm really smiling again. Laughing, actually. I'm serious now, she says. Where were we? You were about to purchase a Mighty Millions ticket. 
Oh yes, that's right, let's do that. I step over to the machine. Do you have a, do you have specific numbers you'd like to play? I do, been playing the same ones since 1989. She calls them out and as the ticket prints, I stop breathing. Three of her white ball numbers, 06, 29, 01, make up my birthday date. And her mighty ball number is 07, which is supposed to be lucky, right? You've got my birthday on here, tumbles out before I can stop it. Frankly, I do my best not to pay attention to the lottery at all. Mama's been obsessed with the idea of winning for as long as I can remember. But after years of watching her make sure she had a dollar for a ticket and continuing to cling to this impossible hope while our finances literally crumbled around her, no doubt she bought at least one for this jackpot cycle. Hard pass. Seeing the day I was born pop up on a ticket though? The lady's face is, the lady's face is lit up brighter than her Christmas tree sweater. Your birthday, huh? Mm-hmm, I pointed out. Well, I'll be. Perhaps you're my lucky charm. My eyes stay fixed on the ticket as she takes it from me. What if she's right? $212 million could be on that little slip. Tell you what, print me one of those quick picks too, she says. Yes, ma'am. Would you like to add the multiplier option to this one? For an extra dollar, it'll double any non-jackpot winnings. Oh no, we're going for the big bank. I laugh, coming right up. The machine spits out the second piece of paper and I slide it across the counter to her. She grabs it and then holds both tickets up to take a good look at them. Then she shuffles them around and puts them face down on the counter. So what do you think, she asks, right or left? Oh, definitely left, I say. She nods and pushes the ticket across the counter to me. Good. It's for you. Whoa. Oh, wow, that's really nice of you, ma'am, but I can't take that. You certainly can, she says. It's my Christmas present to you. I look at it and bite down on my lower lip. God, how amazing would it be to win even part of $212 million? The old bad boy rappers say, mo money, mo problems, but they all had plenty of it. Me? I work at a gas station for $7.75 an hour, and most of that goes toward whatever bill Mama hasn't made enough to cover each month. You know, minus the dollars she spends on weekly lotto tickets. Go on now, pick it up, the lady's saying. Obviously, someone over 18 will have to claim the prize if you win anything, but perhaps one of us will get lucky. She winks. Very different feeling than when Mr. $50 Bill did it. Makes my skin tingle a little. I take the ticket and quickly stick it in my back pocket, which is good because Mr. Zugby chooses that moment to exit his office. Not sure he'd be real keen on a customer buying his underage cashier a lottery ticket. The lady and I exchange a look. She gets it. Well, you've certainly brightened up my Christmas Eve, she says loud enough for Mr. Z to hear. You finish your shift and hurry home now, you hear? I smile and nod again. You be sure to do the same, ma'am. Merry Christmas, baby girl, she turns to leave. I swear that ticket has turned radioactive and my right butt cheek is expanding in size right now. When she gets to the door, it swings wide and I hear her say, why, thank you, young man. My, aren't you handsome? I look up and there, holding it open for her with his million dollar smile is Alexander Macklin, Zan to his friends, groupies, loyal horde, Varsity quarterback, all around teen dream, and heir to the booty paper throne. No, for real, his great great grandfather or something supposedly patented toilet paper on a roll. And now his family runs Macklin Enterprises, which is legitimately famous for its focus on ass wipery. Speaking of ass wipery, rumor has it he only goes to our school because he got kicked out of his fancy private one something about a hacking scandal. And yes, he's handsome. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a clue who I am, despite the fact that I sit two desks behind him in US history. But still, would rather the richest boy in school not see me work in the cash register at the local gas station. Pretty sure my hair's a frizzy mess and there's a cheese stain on my apron from a hot dog I snarfed earlier. Uh, I need to go to the ladies' room, I say, as Mr. Z approaches the counter to restock candy bars. He 
He looks up at me with an eyebrow raised. I glance at the door again. The lady is gone and Zan is stepping inside now. I think our eyes meet, but I turn away too fast to know for sure. Girl problems, I say to Mr. Z. Ah, he lifts his hands, say no more. I slip from behind the counter. Zan has turned down the chip aisle, so I do my best to make no noise, avoid drawing attention. Just as I get to the back, Mr. Z hollers, oh, Miss Danger, he mispronounces my last name. Doesn't rhyme with stranger like everyone assumes. It's actually Donger, and I usually correct people. Having Danger as a last name would be cool if it weren't such a misnomer. Anyway, check the toilet paper supply while you're handling the lady business, yes, he says. So much for a clean getaway. And that is chapter one of Jackpot. So you can see how it's definitely got some humor in there. Um, the mystery has already been established a little bit in the first chapter. And we meet Zan and we get Rico's feelings about him. So that's just a taste of Jackpot. It is a great book. Um, I highly recommend it. It has so many different things going on in it. Um, so Jackpot by Nick Stone. Give it a try.